Engineer Seekers, I'm Nick. Now we're checking out another Z490 board, but this time it's a very, very special Z490 board. It's a collaboration between EK and MSI. It is the MPG Z490 Carbon EKX. And basically what it is, is it's a motherboard that is derived from another Z490 MSI board with an EK mono block that covers the VRMs and it also cools the CPU as well. And because this is a pre-production sample, we don't actually have everything that comes in the box with it. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the board itself. And just remember, ladies and gents, this is not a review. So let's roll that intro. As I mentioned, this video is not a review. This is just an overview. And uh, because this is a pre-production sample, uh, it's actually one of five in existence right now. These, I don't think they're actually in production. I could be wrong. They're not in production yet. So this is a very early version of the board. Obviously it does work. It was sent to us directly from EK. They did not pay us for this video. They basically just sent us a message and were like, hey guys, you wouldn't want one of five of these boards in existence. Uh, we, we choose you like a, like a Pokemon basically. And yeah, they, they chose us. So us and, and I don't know who else got them, but yeah, we're lucky enough to actually have one of these to keep and to do a build with, which we'll have a build coming with this really, really soon. But I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna take a closer look at this beauty of a water-cooled motherboard. Let's do it. Because this is a pre-production sample of the MSI MPG Z490 Carbon EKX, we don't have anything in the box with it. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the motherboard. First up, we've got this big old massive mono block that basically calls the CPU and the VRMs. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this off. I've already installed a CPU in the socket for this, so we didn't damage any of the socket pins because it doesn't actually have a socket cover when it ships to us. And as I flip it over, I'm just showing you that I've got two screws attaching the monoblock to the motherboard, but as you can see here, it actually has holes for all screws in all four corners and also to fasten additional screws for mounting pressure on the VRMs as well. So yeah, this is just like this because it's for demonstration purposes only essentially. I'm quickly just gonna pull out the two screws that I have in there all already so we can get that mono block off so we can take a little bit of a closer look at the motherboard with the mono block off and then we'll obviously show everything about the mono block in this video as well so it's fairly simple to remove you just slide it out and away you go and you will notice that I have a 10 900k already in the socket ready for a build that we've got coming up there's a front panel audio connector there's a 12 volt RGB header there's two PWM fan connectors there's a COM port header, which is actually quite interesting. Well, that's for a serial port. There's two USB 2.0 headers. There's a TPM or a trusted platform module header. There's an RGB on and off switch, much like the Z490 Ace that we checked out a few weeks ago. There's an addressable RGB header. There's a Corsair RGB header, a Thunderbolt header, and the front panel header for all the lights and everything in your case to make it turn on and make everything else light up. There's six SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives, all pretty standard stuff here. There's a right angle USB 3.2 header. There's a USB type C header a little bit further up. And then there's a 24 pin power connector to send all of that juice to that brand new motherboard. There's also four more additional PWM fan connectors. There's another Corsair RGB header and another three pin five volt addressable RGB connector below that. On the top left hand side of the board there's an 8 pin EPS power connector as well as an additional 4 pin EPS power connector as well. There's three full size by 16 PCIe slots. The top one is a by 16 slot, the middle one is a by 8 slot and the bottom one is a by 4 slot and there's also two by 1 slots as well on the board. And because this is Z490, it does not require an actively cooled chipset as you can see here but it does have a nice little heat sink with that carbon EKX on it. And it's got like this carbon fiber finish, which looks very, very nice and very, very stylish. I really like how they did this. Because this is a Z490 board, it features a standard LGA 1200 socket. As you can see, it's got the standard Intel cooler mounting holes as well, although obviously you wouldn't need it with this board because of the mono block. There's also a 12 phase digital VRM set up on this board. And these are the VRMs and chokes that are above the CPU socket. And there's also another bank of them next to the CPU socket on the left hand side of the board as well. And obviously you wouldn't see this because the mono block covers all of this and it actively cools all of this with liquid. 
wizard. And because it is using this mono block, it does go underneath the IO cover as well. So you can see all the rear side of the IO if you take a closer look too. There's also four DDR4 RAM slots supporting up to 128 gigs of RAM with overclocked memory up to 4,800 megahertz. All right, what we're gonna do quickly is we're just gonna take off the M.2 heat sinks and take a little bit closer look at those M.2 slots. There's two M.2 slots in total which support basically any type of M.2 and NVMe drive. It also supports SATA drives as well. It will disable one of the SATA ports if you're using it that way. Okay, let's take a closer look at that rear IO. There's some USB ports, there's a PS2 port, there's an HDMI port and a display port if you're using integrated graphics. There is a USB type C port. There's some USB 3.2 ports. There's a 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter, which is pretty standard on Z490. There's a Wi-Fi six adapter or Wi-Fi AX adapter. There's 7.1 digital surround sound with SPDIF and an integrated IO shield. But let's take a closer look at that mono block. This is a full look at the top of the mono block. As you can see, it's got standard inlet and outlets for your water cooling components. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at that as well. It's yeah, it's it's fairly standard with the standard thread size that you'll find on all water cooling gear. And in typical EK fashion, the build quality is exceptional here. There's also and some MSI MPG branding and an EK logo towards the bottom of the monoblock as well and a, a little carbon EKX engraving on the other side of the monoblock if we rotate it. And just having a quick look at the micro fins and the jet plate here. This is all amazing quality from EK as per usual. Nothing nothing surprising here. And this is what it looks like if we rotate the monoblock just a little bit so you can have a bit of a different perspective of it. As you can see, there's O-rings that seal up everything to make it all watertight. But let's flip that monoblock over and take a little bit of a look at the design as you can see, the uh, whole cold plate for the CPU IHS contact is covered with that label there. You can also see the cold plates for the VRMs and the choke as well. There is included thermal pads, which I obviously didn't put on here. What I'm going to do is quickly just remove the sticker off the bottom of the cold plate for the CPU IHS. And we can take a little bit of a close look at this exceptionally built monoblock. And like, like I always say with EK stuff, they make the best water cooling components on the market and the quality here, as per usual, really, really shows. And that's not even me being a fanboy. This is just straight up facts. They are the best in the business. And it's great that MSI teamed up with EK for this because like, like I, I've said 10 times now, they legitimately make the best quality stuff. And yeah, these are obviously the cold plates for the VRMs and the chokes. And like I also mentioned, there are included thermal pads, which we're gonna be using when we do the full build for this. But yeah, obviously in this video, we're just taking a look at the actual motherboard itself. And there's also an addressable RGB header to light up the monoblock as well. And speaking of lighting up the monoblock, let's light up the monoblock.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you guys enjoyed this first look and closer look and a bit of an overview of the brand new MPG Z490 Carbon EKX. Now, uh, in classic EK fashion, and this, like I've mentioned, they didn't, this isn't a paid video, this is none of that stuff. They literally asked us if we wanted one and I said yes. That said, like I just mentioned before, earlier in the video, in classic EK fashion, it is actually built very, very well with, well, the EK components. I mean, obviously it's an MSI board, so it's gonna be pretty good anyway, but this monoblock is gorgeous and I love it. I think they did a really, really nice job on it and I cannot wait to build with it. We will be doing a full water-cooled build. I think we're gonna go full MSI and EK for everything. Obviously it's gonna be EK because of the board, but we've got a bunch of new EK stuff like arriving tomorrow basically. And we're gonna, I think we're gonna do it in an MSI case just for something a little bit different. We think we're going with the Sakura 500X because you guys have been requesting us doing a build in it and the timing was basically I was like, hey MSI, EK sent us this board. Do you wanna um, help us get our hands on one of those cases? And they were like, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, let's do it. So basically, yeah, we're gonna try and go as EK and MSI as possible. That's gonna be very, very good. And I hope you guys enjoyed this close uh, look at this board. And if you like the music you heard here, ladies and gents, I make all the music. It's actually a new track that I featured in today's video. Haven't used it before. I only made it a few days ago and I wanted to like, Give it a bit of a go and yeah, if you wanna get early access to videos like this one, you can join us over on Floatplane or hit the join button to support the channel. That's it, am I done, Claire? Yeah. Cool, well, once again, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And um, I wouldn't usually do something like this, but um, I feel like the timing of this video might actually be rather unfortunate given what is happening in the world right now with the pandemic and what's happening in America. And um, I don't wanna to get too political with this, but I, there's, there's a few things I do wanna say. <laughs> I, I am obviously a person of color and um, I personally cop a fair bit of racism on the internet daily. And um, I don't understand why people uh, in 2020 are being persecuted for essentially the color of their skin and it, it doesn't make sense to me and it makes me really upset and um, I'm trying not to get emotional about it but um, I'm a human, we're all humans, you know, like I have feelings. I know um, some people try not to show this side of them on the internet but what I do want to say is I want everyone out there to stay really, really safe and actually this is hard for me to say. I'm feeling a bit emotional actually saying this. So. Yeah, everyone just stay safe out there in the world. Um, look after each other. And this stuff just doesn't need to happen. Like it's just, it's crazy. It just doesn't need to happen. It's 2020 guys. We don't want it to be that year in the history books that we look back on in the future and say, oh, like like 1914 with World War One and Tsar Nicholas and Franz Ferdinand and all these crazy things. Can you imagine if we look back and we're like, wow, we were really stupid. So yeah, that's what I've got to say about it. And yeah, I, I do feel like this video has really unfortunate timing, but um, yeah, I can tweet about it until the cows come home, but who's listening? Thanks for watching.